Okay, so it's classical mechanics, and every book covers the rocket equation, so I have to talk about the rocket equation, but I really don't like the rocket equation, but here we go. So here's a picture of a rocket. I, mean, I don't, please don't get me wrong. I think rockets are awesome. I just don't like the rocket equation. Okay, but let's gonna, we're going to do it anyway, because, you know, we're going to do things. So here is your most basic rocket. And so the idea is there's a spacecraft, and there's fuel. And whatever that fuel is, the fuel gets ejected out the end. So during this process, the rocket pushes on the fuel. But since forces come in pairs, the fuel pushes back on the rocket. So we have these two forces that have equal magnitudes but are in opposite directions. That's just the nature of force. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what pushes on that fuel. It could be a spring. It could be a chemical reaction that, that pushes it out. It could be a person throwing things out the back. It doesn't matter. So, but with that... The change in momentum of the rocket is just going to be the force on the fuel times delta T, or we could, but that's also the negative, the force on the fuel times delta T. They're, those are the same forces at the same time. So we get the change momentum of the rocket is the negative of the change momentum of the fuel. It's just conservation momentum. Okay. And that works, and that's cool. Everyone's cool with that. I'm cool with that. Okay. So the rocket equation. Here's where we're going to start. We have our rocket, it has a mass m, and this is one dimensional. Okay, uh, so we don't have to deal with vectors. So we have that mass, uh, and then it's going to shoot out this little piece of fuel. So V is the speed of the rocket, and it's moving to the right. M is the mass of the rocket before it shoots stuff out. Okay. DM is the mass of the piece of fuel that it shoots out. And it shoots it out at a speed U with respect to the speed of the rocket. So that's with respect to the velocity of the rocket. So every time it shoots it out, it's U is the speed with respect to the rocket. That's important. And it's going to the left, okay, which I'll show in just a second. And then uh, dV is the change in speed in the rocket. Uh, so if we write this down as a conservation momentum equation, we have the momentum before is just m times v. And then after, we have two things that have momentum, and those have to add to the same thing. So we have the momentum of the rocket. It has a mass of m minus dm, because it lost some of its, its mass. It shot it out. And it has a velocity of v plus dv, because it sped up. Now, the piece of mass that got shot out, the fuel, uh, its momentum is dm. And its velocity is the difference in the velocity of the rocket before it was shot out, minus the speed that it was shot out at. Okay, I know that that is, it's a weird way to write it. I get that, okay? I struggled with that too, but that's the way it's written. I don't think it's the best. I already, told, I already said I didn't really like the rocket equation, so there's no, there's no hidden agenda here. Okay, so let's do the math. Uh, so here is that same equation. All I'm going to do is multiply out the two parentheses so that I, I don't have any parentheses anymore. And so I get that first term, I get uh uh, four pieces, mv, mdv, vdm, dvdm, v, and then the last terms I get vdm and minus udm. Now, some stuff cancels right away. You can see the mvs are on both sides and those cancel, and then I get a, uh, I get this. So I get zero mdv minus dmdv minus udm. And so if I, if I solve that, uh, for dmdv, I, I get that. I just added dmdv to both sides. There. Okay. Oh, but hey, this every textbook says this. Oh, hey, look. dmdv is really small. And okay, yeah, if you have two differentials multiplied by each other, and in, in the limit that, that dm goes to zero, because you're going to you know, take that derivative, then you have two of these things, and they're both small, and they're both multiplied by each other, so this, the result is like super, super small. So let's just say it's zero. What the heck? Zero. Done. So... Then we have this, mdv equals dmu. And I usually write u dm because then it looks like it's clear that the two different terms, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So I want to get all the v terms on one side and all the mass terms on the other side. So if I divide both sides by m, I get dv equals u dm over m, where u is just a constant, right? That's the velocity of the exhaust with respect to the rocket. It's the same every time you shoot a piece of mass out, assuming. Now, I have a different equation. I have, DV, I have v's on one side, u's on the other side, so I can integrate both sides. So if I integrate the left side from uh, velocity 1 to velocity 2, 
that's pretty easy. And if I integrate the other side, remember u is a constant. u aren't a constant, u matter. But in this case, u is a constant. From mass one to mass two, I get uh, the natural log of m2 over m1, and that's u. That's the, well, that's, okay. So then the, the change in velocity is u natural log of m2 over m1. Now, one of the things that you'll see, if you go back right here real quick, oh, crap, okay. So here I have the m2 is the final mass over the initial mass, but the way they write it is the initial mass over the final mass, because remember, u was in the negative direction. So if you say the magnitude of the exhaust speed, not taking into account that it's going to the left, there's a negative sign there. And then if you bring the negative sign into the natural log, it flips that. I know, I, I, re I do not like this equation, okay? It's just, it's weird. Uh, so then I get the, the traditional rocket equation. So the change in velocity for a rocket depends on u, the exhaust speed. M0 is the starting mass of the rocket with the fuel and everything in it. And M final is if you use up all your fuel, that would be the final mass of the rocket. So the rocket without the fuel, okay? There you go, the rocket equation. But wait, there's more. So here are two rockets. Actually, these are both fake. So the one on the left is a nuclear rocket idea, which is kind of cool. And the one on the right is just a chemical-based rocket. Again, uh, actually, that's just a fake rocket because you know no one really gets these pictures in space. So, th but this thermal rocket, you would, it, you would kind of uh, use nuclear fusion or you kind of make a nuclear explosion inside this chamber to heat up some hydrogen and then the hydrogen gets shot out. So the hydrogen's your, your fuel. And I'm gonna consider a slightly different nuclear rocket. Um, and then we have a conventional rocket. You also have uh, an ion rocket, which uses a electric potential difference to accelerate ions and shoot those out. They're all the same, okay. But what if I take this to the extreme case? So he, imagine I have two rockets. One's a nuclear powered rocket and it shoots out just, they both have the same mass to start with. They both have the same mass of fuel. The nuclear rocket shoots all of its fuel out at one time in one giant lump. And the rocket B uses conventional thrusters and it actually has two pieces of fuel and shoots one out, then the other out. So at the end, which one would be going faster? Would it be better to shoot them all out at the same time or shoot them out separately? So if you use ideas of conservation momentum, we have to have momentum conserved. Rocket A, moving to the right, has some mass, the same as B, and some velocity, and then the fuel going to the left has some mass and velocity. And that has to add up to zero if it started from rest. Now rocket B shoots out half of the mass with the speed u, and then it shoots out the other half of the mass with a different speed, because it once, once it shoots out that second piece of mass, it's already moving. So its velocity with respect to the background is actually gonna be lower than the velocity for the first piece of mass. So if you take the uh, momentum of those two pieces of fuel, you're gonna get a lower momentum than the one piece of fuel that was shot off together. That means rocket B would end up going slower by shooting out multiple pieces of fuel. But wait, that doesn't make sense, right? Because here's my rocket equation. It doesn't say anything about how many pieces you break the fuel into. It just says initial mass, final mass. These two rockets have the same initial mass, the same final mass, the same ejected velocity of the fuel. And that's why that piece U2 is slower, right? Because it shot that out with respect to the velocity of the rocket, which is going faster than zero. So that ends up having a lower momentum. Okay, does that make sense? So if it, when you don't understand something, the best thing to do is to build a model. So here I built a model in Python. Here you can see two rocket ships. The red one on the top shoots out one mass of fuel. The other one shoots out 10. I think that's 10 pellets of fuel. Um, and I used the rocket equation to model this. And you see that uh, the, the red one does indeed go faster, okay? It's better to shoot all of your stuff out at once rather than individual pieces. And then here I can graph that too. So the yellow line is, uh, if I shoot, I've broken into, one, one shot was born. So what if I break it into five pieces of fuel and I shoot it, each time I shoot it, I increase in speed and then I travel to constant speed, I increase in speed. And I have the same fuel rate as the green line, which is 50 shots. And that you see the 50 shots uh, is, is pretty close to a continuous. 
and then we have this uh, blue curve in there which is continuous using the rocket equation and so you see that they are they do give a different answer though okay but what we need to do is to build a better rocket equation so let's go back to the beginning here we have dm dv is really small remember that we said that well th that's no longer true right if i shoot out all my mass at one time then dm is not small and the change in velocity is not small so this this is no longer true so i need to put this term back into my equation and i have so now i have that i can again solve for dv and get all the dvs on one side and i get this so this is another differential equation it's not as easy to integrate you you can you can but i don't i don't want to okay but I can model this, uh, you know, if discreetly. So I can say, take, this is just based on the momentum principle, conservation momentum. So if I take a small time step where I shoot out a piece of mass, I can calculate the change in momentum and the, and the change in velocity. That's all I have to do. And then I decrease the mass of the rocket and I do it again and again. And so uh, we can plot this version, which is actually better than the rocket equation, and see what happens as I play around with the number of pieces breaking the fuel into different pieces. And here's my confusing graph. Okay, so let's look at this blue curve. This has a, uh, a rocket. This is the mass of the rocket with respect to the fuel, I think. And what happens if I break? Yeah, so this is 10 to 1. So the, the mass of the, of the fuel is 10 times the mass of the rocket which is crazy well but not too crazy and if that case if i shoot it all out all out at once i do get at the same velocity which is also a tricky thing okay at the same velocity then i get a greater change in velocity compared to a continuous rocket that's what this curve is it's the ratio of the final velocity versus the continuous velocity and as i break that into more and more pieces i approach continuous velocity so i, I get closer to one if I have a very, uh, if the mass of the rocket is much greater than the mass of the fuel, I'm pretty sure that's, that's right. Then, then this this delta, this change in mass doesn't really make a big difference, and it doesn't it doesn't matter whether you break it into pieces or not. Of course, you know this is making a really big assumption that that isn't really realistic, and part of the problem with the rocket equation, and that's if I take stuff and eject it. You know, if, if I take all my fuel and push it out, it's going to take more energy to shoot that all out at once than to break into pieces. And and so, you know, this idea that they're all shot out with the same speed, exhaust speed relative to the rocket is really ridiculous that I used anyway. Um, but there you go. That's the rocket equation. I feel better to check that off my list to saying, there, I did the rocket equation. Um, we can do some more problems with that later, but I'm probably going to move on and do some other cool things. Talk to you guys later.